this morning we're talking about influence. And some of us, I know that some of us really believe and can really feel like we're not being an influence or we're not um, being all that we can be. Amen? Anybody ever felt like that? I have anybody feeling like this? You don't have to put your hand up, but you know, if you, if you can relate to that, man, I really believe that God wants to speak to you this morning, eh? You know that, um, you know that you were created by God, you know that, eh? You, you don't just exist, you were created for a purpose, and you were created in, in love. And, and when, when God made you, when he formed you in your mother's womb, he had plans for you. And he knows the things that he has set before you. But I want to ask you this question this morning. Do you know, do you know the, the plans that God has for you? Because I want to encourage you to, to find out, you know, to really find out. So this morning we're looking at influence. Hey, let's give the team another hand, eh? That was awesome, eh? I, I loved it. That song was one of my favorite songs by uh, Toby Mac, speak life, speak life, and, and I love the way the, um, the drama had ended, you know, like, every encounter that we have, we either give life or we drain life, every encounter that we have, and I believe that as long as you are alive, you can have an impact on everybody around you, and whoever you come into contact with, um, like I was said, it's either life-giving or it's life-draining. Because influence, influence is either good, you can influence in a good way, or you can influence in a bad way. Amen? Isn't that right? There's good influences, there's bad influences. Now the word influence means the capacity, so the, the ability, the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something. So it means that I have the capacity or ability to impact something, to, to, to change the course of something, or to inspire something, or to persuade um, decisions that are made, or to, um, I guess, influence the thinking and, and, and the changing of minds. And that's what you carry. <laughs> every one of us carries it. Do you believe it? Amen. Every one of us, every single one of us carries that. Everybody does. You carry influence. That's why Jesus says you are the salt and the light of the earth. You're the one who brings change. Salt, salt what salt does is it, salt preserves or slows down the process of death, of, of meat. You know, when you preserve meat, you, you preserve it in salt. And what it does is it stops the meat decaying so fast. So it slows it down. You can sort of say it sort of saves the meat, you know? And that's what you are. You are the salt of the world. You preserve life. <laughs> because we live in a world where people are dying. And we live in a world where people are going to die eternally. We will, they will die and be separated from God. But you are the salt. You can stop that. You are the salt. You have the influence over that. Amen? Yeah. It's true, man. Jesus said, uh, you are the salt. You are. You are the salt. You might think you can never make a difference or, 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 or I, can't, I can't do anything, but you can because you are. Amen? Amen. Yeah. It says you are the light of the world. And light, light brings, um, the, I guess, the ability to see. And through you, people can see light. People can see truth. People can see Christ, and, and what light does also is that it gives, it gives life. You know a plant cannot grow without life. You, did you know that? I think it's called um, photo something. Yeah. Plants need life. Stop taking selfies. <laughs> Be photosynthesis to other people, eh? You bring life to, the, to people. You bring life everywhere you go. That's... That is the potential that you have, and that is what God has called you. You are the salt and the light of the earth. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's the influence that you carry. You know, 
um, I wanted to show you guys something. You know, influence, right? Influ okay, these, I just want to give you two examples of people that influenced my life um, growing up. But before I start, I want to tell you a story. Okay. At work, at work, um, you can imagine a construction site, uh, I think eight stories high. And if you've ever been on a construction site before, there's always a, there's always a crane that carries um, the materials. You know, like you got to the second floor, they're not going to do it like with manual labor. They've got machine now. So they, what they do is they, they bring in the, um, the goods. And I'm talking like stacks, you know, this high of heavy stuff. So the, what they do is they use the crane to lift it up, and, and on every level, there's a loading, a loading deck. So the crane will drop off the, the material to whatever floor, and the laborers will come and, and grab it and take it to wherever it's needed. Right. So at lunchtime, at lunchtime there's three guys. Um, they were sitting on... Um, three guys that every day you'll see them together. Um, they're sitting on the... Um, by the edge of the, the loading dock, because the loading dock has rails as well. And every break, you know the crane driver's, he's not in operation, he's on his break, so they take the time to enjoy the view and have lunch together, three guys, and they'll talk to each other. And um, they would share, like, to come together and they'll share lunch, hey, what did you guys have for lunch today? And um, one guy was like, yeah, I got this, I got that, and, you know, um, I've got... I guess sandwiches. The other guy's like, oh, my, my wife made me rice again. Or my wife, yeah, my wife made me a ham sandwich. And uh, the other guy's like, oh, I got corned beef and, you know, and bread. And, and so this happened for five days. So, oh, sorry, Monday to, to Thursday. And, and they were like, what did you get? On Thursday, they're like, what did you get for lunch? What did your wife make you for lunch? And the guy, same thing. He's like, oh, I got a sandwich again. I've got a, um, what did I say the second one? Rice. You, this guy's Asian. Okay. <laughs> He's rice. He's like, I got rice. And then the other guy's like, I got corned beef and bread. So the, these two, the two guys, that, that, or the three guys were talking together. The first guy that he had the sandwich, he was like, man, I'm sick of having this. If I get rice for, uh, if I get a ham sandwich tomorrow, I'm going to jump off this. I'm sick of having this for lunch every day. Um, and the, the Asian guy was like, if I get rice again tomorrow, I'm going to jump off this, jump off this floor, right? And the other guy with the corned beef, this guy's Samoan, okay? <laughs> he says, he said, if I get corned beef and bread again, I'm going to jump off. And they come Friday, Friday, they come, they come together and they're like, what did you get? And the, guys, the first guy was like, man, I got a ham sandwich again. And so he he jumped off the cliff, or the, 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 the thing. He jumped off and he said, he said, <laughs> sorry, he, he said, and he, sorry, I've got to confess myself. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> the guy jumps off because he got a ham sandwich, and, and the Asian guy said, man, my wife made me rice and stir fry again. So he jumps off and he ends up dying. And the last guy, he says, I couldn't be... And he, he jumps off and ends up dying. And um, it was a tr tragic day. <laughs> and at their funerals, their wives were like, the, the, the guy with the ham sandwich, he, his wife was like, why didn't he say anything? He could have told me I would have changed it. The second guy, the Asian guy's wife said, why didn't he say anything? He could have told me I would have changed it. And the someone's wife guy says, I don't know why he jumped. He makes his own lunch every day. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you see, none of this would have happened if no one had influenced that thinking. You know, if no one had influenced that thinking. You see, influence can come from all sources, right? It can come from everywhere and, and anything. Um, you know, that's why I want to really stress the point and the fact that you, you are somebody's influence. You are somebody's influence. And, and you can, whoever you encounter, 
you can either influence them good or you can influence them badly. Every encounter, you, you don't even have to say anything. You can just be present. And you being there can either inspire somebody or you can, I guess, drain somebody. It's just who you are. It is just who you are. You are influential. But the question is, how will you be influential? Okay? So in, in my, growing up, for me, this guy, he, he influenced me. Like I grew up um, listening to the, this guy from this, as much as I can remember. And, and this guy, he, he influenced me to, 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 in, to be inspired. Like, man, look at this guy, Michael Jackson. This dude, this guy can dance, he can sing. He can, just look at him like the way that he influenced me, and not just me, he had millions and millions of people that he influenced, right? So he inspired me to dream big as well, like, this is what I want to do, you know, like, if Michael Jackson can do it, I can do it. I, and I grew up watching this guy's videos, watching his movies, listening to all his music, and it always inspired me. My next guy, Tupac. Through my teenage years, I, I listened to this guy day in and day out, 24-7. This guy inspired me deep, you know. When I listened to this, this guy's lyrics, he spoke, the, what he spoke was, resonated with me because he took me deep. He inspired the deep things in me and life. Like, what am I going through? My thoughts and my feelings. That's the way he inspired me. Um, you see, but I want to tell you something. These two guys were influential because they were who they were. Amen. You were created in God's image. And God, and, and you know, the Bible always tells us, be like Jesus, be like Jesus. But God made you in his image, right? And the only way that you can be influential is if you be yourself. You cannot be like Jesus if you're trying to be like somebody else. Those two guys, they have many people who impersonate them to this day. But they will never be as great as him. They will never be greater than him because they're trying to be them. They're trying to be somebody else. But you want to be a great influence? Be yourself. Be who God has created you to be. Don't try to be anybody else. And the only way you can be you is to be like Jesus and get to know Jesus because he's the one who created you. He knows you inside out. Sometimes we don't even know ourselves. Sometimes I couldn't understand who I was. Why, why do I do these things and how come I feel like this? But it wasn't until I got to know God and he showed me who I was. And I want to encourage you that you want to be influential, just be who you are. More importantly, be who you are in Christ. Because it is Christ who builds you. It's Christ who made you. It is Christ it is God who has the plans. For, God says, for I know the plans that I have for you. God says, I know the plans. You don't know. They don't know. But he does. And when you get to know God, then you will, God will begin to reveal to you, this is how I'm going to use you. This is how I've wired you up. This is who you are. You are my son. When you believe, you are my son. Amen? Okay. Awesome. Okay. Sorry for the, the bad joke. I just uh. anyway remember that you cannot be the best influence that you can be until you be yourself okay and you are valuable to God so valuable to God he values you so much and then there's this guy oh sorry there's this also that inspired me the world <laughs> The world inspired me, but it inspired me with desires and temptations. It influ influenced me because I saw when growing up, we didn't have everything. When every other kid had a Sega Master System, I begged my mum, Mum, can I? She said, no, we kind of thought, you suck, mum. <laughs> That's what I said to her. Because the desires and the temptations, I saw what everyone had and I wanted it. You know, like everybody else has got a mum, why can't we? And it, this influenced me to be selfish. Seeing the flash cars and the, 
whatever everybody has, the next gadget, whatever. I, I, I grew up in a, in a Nintendo, Sega, um, Mega Drives and Playstations and, you know, and every new game that came out, every console that came out, I was like, man, I need to get it, I need it, you know. And then in my teenage years, I started wanting, you know, you see the famous people and you see the flashy things and you see the fame and the fortune and you begin to let these, all these things influence you. So influence can come from anywhere and anything. But just know that you, you can be the influence. Amen? You can be it. Jesus was tempted with these things. <laughs> Satan took Jesus and showed him the kingdoms of, of the world and said, all these things I will give to you if you bow down and worship me. You see, I wanted what Satan owns. <laughs> Satan owns this world. This world is his. He runs it. He runs the system. He runs the way things work. And even Satan said to Jesus, he tried to influence him. If you, want, if you bow down and worship me, all this I will give to you, the riches, the kingdoms. Influence can come from Satan as well. But I reckon the best influence comes from God. Amen. Sometimes you, you might be feeling like I'm in this place. And I tell you, man, I'm, I've been to this place. Makes you depressed. <laughs> Makes you depressed because you don't, you know, you don't get what you want. And then you, I don't know, I guess you, you start to get disappointed. And then you start to hate life. And then you start to hate everyone. That was true for me. <laughs> All because of influences in my life. Growing up. You probably can just think about it like you probably knew an uncle that you liked so much. When I grew up, I want to be like this guy. Someone you came across, a friend or something. Man, when I grew up, I want to be like this guy or that guy. Or, you know, my auntie or my uncle, whatever. I want to be like them. That's influence. I didn't even know Michael Jackson I wanted to be like him. Didn't know Tupac I wanted to be like him. Do you see the power of influence? Do you see the power that you carry? <laughs> that is the, the potential that you carry to change the world. That is what Jesus says. You are the salt and the light. You're the one who brings change to the world. That is who you are. Amen? Okay. Jesus said, what good will it be for someone to gain the world, yet forfeit his soul? What good is it? You know, Michael Jackson and Tupac, Incredible, incredible, talented people. But what did they use it for? What good is it if I gain the world? What good is it if I gain followers? What good is it if I become the best gamer or the fastest runner or whatever? What good is it if I gain the world, if I gain reputation, if I gain all the riches, if I gain all for me in this life? What good is it if I gain everything in this life, but yet forfeit eternity, but yet forfeit my soul, yet forfeit um, being reconciled to God? What good is it? I mean, I can work this whole life and, and do what I want, do as I please, but what good will it bring? You know, the 80 years, sorry, 80, some people live, how old's the oldest person at the moment? 100 and 19, eh, I think it was. 119. She was born in like, like she lived through the 1920s, that's all I know. And she's still alive today. She lived through the 1920s. And I studied the 1920s in school. What an incredible time, but she was alive then. Until this day, she, she's 119 years old. But all those years can never compare to eternity. And what good is it if I live this life to influence all for my own glory, all for me, all for what I can get? What good is it? It's only a dot compared to a line that goes eternally around the globe. A tiny dot. Do, do, do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? What good is it? It's not worth it. It's not worth living this life for this life. It's better to live this life for eternity. 
Amen. Amen. All right. Now this guy, when he came into my life, when he found me in my wretchedness and my down times, he inspired me with truth. <laughs> he inspired me with truth. Like I, I finally saw Jesus. He said, I'm the light of the world. And when he came into my life, light came into my life. And I was able to see the truth. I was able to see the truth. And my spirit came alive. He caused my spirit to come alive in him. And now, this is all I live for. This is who I want to live for. That's it. I don't care. I always tell Jess, and you know, I would be happy in a square box by living my life for Jesus. Because I know in heaven, he's gone to prepare a place for me. And whatever I do in this world, I do it for his glory. Because I get to share in it when he comes. I get to share in it when he comes. Heaven is far, far greater than this earth. This earth is passing away. But heaven is eternal. That's where I want to be. That's, is that where you want to be? Amen. Isn't that where you want to be? But to, to get there, you've you, you got, to, you got to know the Lord. And when you know the Lord, you can be an incredible influence to everybody around you. You know, before Christ was in my life, I used to put people down. I used to laugh and mock at people. And you know, no, you know this guy's just a, no, 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 this guy, whatever. I did that most of my life when I was living for myself. But when I found Christ, he changed my heart. He changed who I was. And now all I can do is encourage people. All I can do is, in, is inspire people. That's all I can do. I can't do it any other way because Christ has shown me the way. Amen? Christ has shown me the way. Why? Because Christ did it to me. Christ encouraged me. Christ told me who I was. Christ, he, it's incredible. And you, you know that. You carry that. Amen? You carry that. So, just going off um, what... what what the, at the drama um, with uh, Eugene's character. You know, he was sitting here going, man, I only got through to half of them. <laughs> They're all not listening, but only half of them. And this is an this is, uh, uh, um, interesting scripture that I found um, where Jesus was talking about the kingdom of heaven. Right? He says the kingdom is like this. The firstly, he talks about the kingdom is like a farmer who went and scattered seeds. And then he says the kingdom is like something else, and then he comes down to this bit, and he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which is, a, a, which a man took and he planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants, and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He says the kingdom is like a seed, right? It starts small, but then it grows big. You think about it, 12 people, Jesus and 12 people, like a small seed in the field, in the field, in the world, right? It started with 12 people, and you look how big it's grown today. From 12 people that God used to influence the world. It's the same influence that God wants to have in you. The same effect, because that's what influence is, is the effect and the ability to, to impact that's the impact that these 12 men had. And God wants to be the same with you. Isn't that awesome? Though it is the smallest of seeds. Now, I don't know what the word smallest is used here, but I can imagine though it is the smallest of seeds because in that time there were other seeds. There were other religions. There were other ways. There were other... But though it is the smallest of seeds, you could say it was... Could have been the most insignificant of seeds. I don't know. But I, I guess you can see that. But you look at it, look at it, the impact that it has in this world. 2,000 years ago, and it's still growing. 2,000 years ago, and it is spread out through almost the, the whole world. Isn't that incredible? Look at the potential that you have. It is the smallest seed 
But yet when it grows, it grows into a giant tree in the garden. What an incredible influence that you carry. And that is the kingdom of heaven. It's like that, the influence that it has. So that even the birds can perch in its branches. So that people can come and find safety. So that other people can come and make it a home. Amen. The influence that you carry, that is who you are. You belong to him. He still, he told, he told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast. That a woman, so this is the next uh, verse. It's like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked through all the dough. You guys know what yeast does, eh? Makes the flour rise. Um, when you're making bread and it causes it to rise. That's who you are. You give life. You make things rise. Amen? The message that you carry, the life that you live, you bring life to other people. You know, I found an interesting that Jesus um, used the word yeast, and then I, I went and said, hey, I had a look at yeast. I mean, I'm not going to explain what yeast is because I don't, don't really listen to the, to the um, videos. But anyway, I looked at yeast, and, and it's incredible. Remember when Jesus told his disciples, he said, be careful of the yeast of the Pharisees. Isn't that right? That's what he said. Be careful of the yeast of the Pharisees. And then the disciples were like, is it because we didn't have bread? <laughs> you know, and he's like, no, you don't get what I'm saying. Be careful of the yeast. Be careful of the influence of the Pharisees. And in, in Galatians, Paul says, a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. And in Corinthians, he says, your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Now in Galatians, Paul is using this, he's saying, you remember what he said to Galatians? He said, you started off with the spirit, but now you're ending in the flesh. And he brings this up. I think it's in chapter 5. Yep, chapter 5, verse 9. And he says, don't you know that a little bit of yeast, a little bit of yeast, a little bit of influence can affect the whole batch of dough? And he's saying, you guys are listening to the law and letting the teaching of circumcision come in. You're affecting the spirit. You're letting what is dead, something that brings death, because the letter kills, the law kills. You're letting that in, and it's destroying the spirit. You started with the spirit, but now you're ending in the flesh because of this little bit of yeast, this one teaching. Is it, don't you find that incredible? Same with the Corinthians church. You, you guys have the spirit, but you're letting this one bit of yeast in, into the batch. And I want to ask you, what are you letting into your batch? Don't you know that a little bit of yeast, don't you know that a little bit of the world can affect your whole Christian life? Don't you know that a little bit of the world can affect all of your eternity? Don't you know that a little bit of the world can affect who you are and the influence that you can be? Don't you know just a little bit of it can destroy what God is working in you? Isn't that right? But hey, these, these things are written as warnings and encouragements for us. Isn't that right? So I want to ask you a question. Actually, and challenge you. What is influencing you? What are you allowing? What little bit of yeast are you allowing, are you allowing into your batch? Into, into your life, into who you are and who, who God has created you to be. And then he says, sorry, I found this scripture. I, I, and I, this, is, this will be the last scripture that we go to. And it's not to condemn anybody. It's not to, 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 to say, oh, you shouldn't be doing this, shouldn't be doing that. But it's, I guess you can say it's, it's good for us to have a think about. Amen? It's good for us to think about and, and see what God is saying. So he says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be, be filled with the Spirit. Now, who knows what being drunk is? Yeah, I know, I know. 
What do, what do they call it when they when they catch you drunk driving? What what is it called? And uh, yeah, intoxicated. But well, what is the law that's broken in America? I think do we use it here in America? I know it's called a DUI, right? What is DUI? Driving, driving under the influence, yeah. isn't that right? So Paul says, don't be drunk with wine, don't be under the influence of wine and spirits. Drinking, being drunk, is when you're under an influence. But he says, instead, be influenced and filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? So what, what are you letting influence you? Like, what are you letting influence you? Who has influenced you? What is influencing you? And in Ephesians, he says, let the Spirit influence you. Let it fill you so that everything you do will come out of that. And everything you say will come out of that. And everything that you, you know, so that the next time you encounter people, you will give them life instead of drain it from them. Amen? Amen. I, and and I, can, I can testify to the, the effects that this has. You know? I can testify. But for you, you know, you talk to God about it. You pray about it. Talk to God about it. He'll tell you. He'll tell you. Jesus was influenced, right? Even he alone, he says, I do nothing on my own, but speak what the Father has taught me. The whole time Jesus was walking and living, he was influenced by God. He says, I do nothing. Everything I do, I do nothing on my own except what the Father has influenced me. What I see my Father doing, I do it. What I see my Father saying, I say it. So I want to encourage you, is God, is he your influence? Like, is he? Like, ask yourself honestly, is he? I have to ask myself this heaps of times, is he? Am I doing what God is doing? You know, the more I question myself, the, the, the more, the easier I found it to walk with the Lord. I question so many things in my life. But in the end, I found it very um, crucial for my relationship with God and, 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 and allowing the Spirit to, to, to influence me. That is a key thing, you know. So I want to I wanna, um, put out another question. That was the, is it the second question? Who's influencing you? What, you know, is God influencing you? Am I... Am I under the influence of God? Because Jesus was, and aren't we meant to be like him? Yeah, we're supposed to be like him, eh? So the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You see, we can either drain life or we can give life. Jesus came to give it, and that you can have it more abundantly. He came to give life here and now, and life eternal. That's how God, that's how Jesus used his influence to give life. To give life. You know, I talk to so many people and sometimes, sometimes I get so heartbroken at the way Christians talk to people because they tell me their encounters with other Christians. I spoke to a young fellow at the creek here And I said to him, hey, bro, do you believe in God? Do you, do, are you, do you have faith? Do you believe? And he says, nah, I don't really. And he, he tells me, and we had this real good conversation. And I asked, him, I asked him why he doesn't believe. He says, so he doesn't know why. That's what he said. He goes, I don't know why. I haven't really thought about it. And he goes, but this put me off. Okay? He said, this put me off. I said, what? And he said, there was a Christian lady who talked to him. And she said to him about the tattoos that he had on his arms. She said to him, you shouldn't get those tattoos, they attract demons. That's what she said. That's the influence that she used. And I said to the young fellow, I said, that Christian lady is an idiot. <laughs> that Christian lady is an idiot. Why would you go and push something on somebody who doesn't believe? 
Why not just give life? Why not just tell them the good news? Why not just tell them that God loves you? Why not just tell them about Jesus? How dare Christians go around and push law on non-believers? The most stupidest thing you can do. And judge people according to the word when they don't even believe. It's not even their faith. How will you use your influence for God? Are you going to drain, use Christianity to drain people and put them off and kill them? Or are you going to give them life and tell them about the love and the mercy and the grace of God? Because none of us would be here if it wasn't for God. We get our living and our being from Christ, our moving and our strength, our breath, everything that we do, everything that who we are is from God. Let's tell everyone about it. Don't put them off God. Don't put them off God. Jesus never went around telling people. I spoke with uh, um, the guy that lives behind me. This guy's a, 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 a mongrel mob, right? I, talk, I, I asked him, hey, bro, do you believe? Because he, he had a sore knee. So I spoke with him. I said, can I pray for you, bro? And he, we got to talk about faith. And he says to me, he says, ah, oh, he goes, I believe there's a God, he goes, but I don't believe in what the Christians say. And I said, what does a Christian say, bro? And he said to me, oh, I don't believe it when people tell you you're going to go to hell if you don't believe in God. I said, yeah, bro, I, I, I agree, bro. I said, you're right, bro. He said to me, what? Because he expected me to, 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 to battle him. And I said, nah, bro, I agree with you. I don't agree in telling people they're going to go to hell if they don't believe. I said, that's the way man preaches. Jesus never preached like that. Everywhere Jesus went and he encountered the sinner, he told them the good news. The only time Jesus talked about hell was to the self-righteous and to those who claimed they had a relationship with God because they thought they were going to heaven. But Jesus said, you ain't going to heaven. And let me tell you about hell. Hell is a good point. To, to, it is good to tell people about hell, but don't tell them they're going there. Tell them that you can get out of there. Influence, use the influence correctly. Amen? This is what I said to him. And he was like, man, I never looked at it like that. I said, that's man preaching, bro. That's not God. Jesus never did that. And you know, I find it sad that people go around preaching and saying, this is what God's going to do to you if this is what God's going to do to you. This is what God's going to do to you. Jesus never said, this is what I'm going to do to you. But he said, this is what you're going to do to me. This is what you're going to do to me. You're going to put me on the cross. I'm going to suffer for you. For you, so that you don't have to suffer. You don't have to take God's wrath. Don't you find that true? Everywhere he encountered a sinner, he used this influence to bring life. The woman sitting at the well... The woman caught in adultery. Everywhere he encountered a sinner, he brought life. And I want to tell you, like, if we don't influence the world for the kingdom, it is worthless. It's no point. No point. If you're not going to influence for the kingdom, might as well not influence at all. <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. But how will you use it? You carry that power. You do have the love of God in you. Amen? I said to that young guy, by the way, I said, that person better not come to Hosanna. I asked him, and it wasn't, so. <laughs> I said, did they come to Hosanna? No, they, he said he named a different church. I was like, yes, good. <laughs> um, but you see, be who you are. I mean, God created you to love. You were created by love and for love and to love. That's who you are. And God, just know that God has you wherever you go. Amen? He's with you wherever you go. You don't have to worry. You might go to somewhere and go, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to think. I don't know how to feel. But hey, trust in God. He will teach you the words to say. And, and, and you make mistakes. Hey, that's okay. I've made mistakes and I've learned from them. <laughs> the more you use your influence, the better you will get at it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to encourage you. 
if you ever think that you are insignificant, remember what Jesus said. Starts off small, ends up big. Amen? Amen. Just like uh, Eugene's character here. I only got through to half of them. So, he, at least there's half of them. Amen. Whereas at the start, it was how many? Just the one, eh? Three. Three, yeah. You see, keep going. Keep trusting God. Keep influencing. Amen. Be who you are in Christ. And God will use you mightily for his glory. Because he is in the business of saving lives. And that's what he wants to use you for. To bring forth his story. To influence with his story. And his story in your life. What an awesome God we have, eh? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Let's pray. Father God, we, um, we thank you, Lord, that you, you influenced us, Lord. And like you love, uh, we love because you first loved us, Lord God. It all started with you. And it ends with you, Father. Lord, we, we ask that you would help us to, um, to, to really um, grasp um, the value of, um, of the kingdom, Lord, and of eternity, Father God. And, and to, to really grasp that everything in this life will pass away, Lord, but your word will never pass away, Lord. So, Father, we, we ask that you would um, really inspire us, Lord, um, um, really um, convict us, Father God, to, 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 to come to a place where we can walk freely in you, Lord, and to use the influence that you have given us to its full potential, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.